welcome everyone. We're gonna give it a couple more minutes as people are trickling in from the waiting room into today's webinar on material cyber risk management. Hopefully you're in the right place. This is a SWAN and ABB partner webinar. Thanks for joining us. As people are joining, um, I first of all just want to introduce myself. My name is Shirley. I'm SWAN Senior Advisor. I'm also joined by my colleague here, Shana, a SWAN COO. We have a fantastic lineup here today. Uh, just for reference, this webinar is being recorded and it will be transcribed uh, by Zoom's AI companion so we can kind of help consolidate a lot of the great um, insights from today. Again, thank you for joining us. We're going to go ahead and uh, move to the next slide. And if you're able to move to the next slide. Thank you very much. So this is uh, the webinar today. We're gonna actually get to know our panelists uh, very, very shortly um, uh, with and introducing Mike Wright again, our moderator. You will have, you will notice in this webinar, there's a QA and a uh, chat function. Please use it um, as, the, uh, as the webinar continues to actually add in your questions and hopefully we'll have time to answer those live. Whatever we can't do live, we will try to recap afterwards uh, by reaching out to the speakers. Again, we have a fantastic lineup today with Mike Radigan, Stephanie LeBlanc, Robert Pippen, and Philippe Thomas, uh, Philippe de Costa. Um, next slide, again, they'll introduce themselves shortly. Very few intro slides. Uh, Shane, if you don't mind, thank you so much. As people, again, are trickling in. Uh, for some of you, it might be your first time joining a SWAN forum-related event, so welcome. SWAN, very briefly, is the leading organization responsible for advancing data-driven technologies and strategies across drinking water, wastewater, and stormwater. We really collectively bring a lot of global stakeholders together from water utilities, solution providers, research, young professionals, consultants, investors, and regulators to really make sense of the smart water space. Very fitting that we're having this discussion today on cyber because we really focus on people, processes, technologies, risks, and opportunities related to digital transformation. You really can't have that with a, a practical cyber discussion. So again, thank you all for joining us today. Um, next slide. Um, we do uh, bring a lot of events together through SWAN. Uh, these are just some to look forward to that are in person from an unconference workshop in London and America's workshop in Phoenix, Aquatech Amsterdam event and our global annual event uh, in Berlin. Uh, there are abstracts actually out uh, today uh, for Phoenix uh, workshop and, and also live for our annual conference, which is due later in, in January. Um, again, lots going on. I hope you can join us. We're going to go ahead and move quickly to the next slide just to not take away from today's event. Thank you very much. Uh, so today, uh, the main event, I'm excited to introduce Mike Red again uh, from the Business of Security as the Executive Director, a subject at matter expert. If I had his entire bio, we would not have time for any webinar time. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, really, really helpful in helping organizations of all sizes quantify cyber risks in financial terms and really make sense on, for it on a business level uh, experience. Also working with Cisco and with ABB. Uh, Mike, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you um, as the moderator of today's event. And with that, going to hand things over to Mike to help facilitate today's webinar. Uh, thank you very much, Shirley. Uh, great to be with you all today. Uh, I do like to say that Senior leadership in an organization doesn't care about cybersecurity. They care about cyber risk and they want to know how much they have and what they can do about it. Uh, and that will be one of our themes today is you know, how do we assess uh, the risk effectively and communicate it to senior leadership. Um, we also want to talk about what are the reasonable steps uh, to take, given we all have limited resources. And certainly we want to gain uh, lessons learned from the experiences of uh, that will be shared with us by Philippe. Uh, but first, we really would like to get to know our audience. And we have a little uh, way to facilitate that here today. We are going to ask you to interact with us. And of course, throughout the session here, encourage you to put your questions in. This event is for you. We want you to benefit as much as possible from your investment of time today. So uh, as your questions fit with the theme of our discussion, we would uh, love to field your questions throughout the uh, panel discussion. So let's see how this works. We want to see 
uh, your opinions on a few things here. Uh, what are the biggest challenges? Oh, is that our first question? What are the biggest challenges facing cybersecurity today? Or I might say, what's the, uh, oh, I see, this is a, a, what do you call these again? Stephanie word put this cloud. together. Stephanie, word welcome clouds. to the, so, yeah. It's a, a, a word. Uh, word cloud. A word cloud. So uh, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about this? And Stephanie, if you had your keys on the hands on the keyboard right now, what would you be putting in there? What's your biggest challenge? Fishing. <laughs> Fishing and spearing <laughs> and whaling and all of those human components. <laughs> That's right. Good. Oh, we, we had to have AI on here for sure. Yes, absolutely. Then, Obsolete uh, systems is a very good one as well. Oh, Plus one we call those side. soft targets, <laughs> don't we, Rob? <laughs> Hey, sometimes oh, Rob, awesome. obsolete systems are are uh, hard to penetrate because they don't have the the newest, the latest operating systems, right? Weak password, I mean, security through obsolescence, great. but you know, have a read on Windows uh, XP exploits. That's right, and the commercially available tools to uh, leverage them. I think uh, ransomware is uh, was vertical there. Maybe that emphasized it. Yeah, global What's tension. Gender uh, changes. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Weak passwords. Shadow, Shadow IT. IT. <laughs> mm. This is good stuff. I'm sure we're capturing this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, people. Uh, so. Uh, help me understand OT vendor changes, Rob. What is that? Uh, I'm curious about it as well. I think from my perspective at ABB, if I put a, a customer concern hat on, ABB comes to the customer, talks about uh, control system security in a slightly different way than Siemens and a slightly different way than Honeywell. If you own multiple vendor systems, of multiple vintage, et cetera, that, that's a tough challenge to get out of at scale. At least that's you know, what it, you, you know, described that, what, you know, what came to my mind was software updates, you know, coming in for those OT vendor updates, maybe. Yeah. All right. This was excellent. Let's jump to the ah, next. Yeah, no, I get that one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. Ooh, this is very interesting. Okay. Where's cybersecurity on your corporate risk register? Matter of fact, you know, how does it stack rank against the other risk issues uh, that leadership needs to address in order to keep safe, reliable, and we'll call it profitable operations? And of course, we see in these surveys that come out from Deloitte or PwC, and this is broadly across all industries that cyber risk is you know a top boardroom issue top five um but when you measure it against the spend of the organizations we'll call it risk management budget doesn't sometimes doesn't seem to really stack up so i would say the limit test here if it's high you would be getting your budget that you want so thinking in that terms uh, i don't know felipe this would be uh one question I was going to say for you later, but I'm going to ask you now. Well, if, I I have put the uh, the yeah. my 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 vote on the high option, uh, but uh, because the, there isn't a higher option, because <laughs> I I think our company was on the high option uh, before the incident that we had on uh, almost two years ago, uh, but since then I believe we are on a higher rank. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of. Go from the top five to the yes. top, to the very top. Five. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's good to know that even prior to the incident, it was considered yes, a yes, yes. risk issue. Well, I this will, is. I will talk about that later, bit, but we we yeah. we also had well. some some regulation about that. Oh, okay. Uh, to me, this is actually a little surprising. I would have thought we would have seen more mediums. Uh, and lows 
just because of the historical issues that cause uh, disruption to services um, would be more mechanical operational issues, I would guess. All right, let's, uh, let's move on. I think we have a third question. Oh, okay. Does your organization have a cybersecurity strategy or roadmap? And this would, the caveat would be, we should put a funded cybersecurity strategy or roadmap. <laughs> How about that, Stephanie? Is yours, yeah. what, at what point was yours funded in your uh, evolution? I, interestingly, when I came into this position in July of 2022, uh, they had already had a funded, I'm going to say map. I wouldn't even call it a roadmap, but they had an idea of what they wanted to do, um, which was excellent. Uh, and we've framed it up quite a bit now. So we have both a strategy and a roadmap. <laughs> so yeah, Health Axe Water is, we have a, you know, we ha it's quite high on our risk register, cybersecurity. Yeah, this is a, um, a formal uh, exercise to achieve this and then execute against it is uh, probably another question is. Auditors uh, help that, Mike. <laughs> if you get audited, <laughs> it helps a lot. Oh, very good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Our, our, well, this is um, now if we could actually see the demographics of our audience, who is in a larger utility versus a smaller utility, it's um, reasonable to expect that the smaller utilities wouldn't necessarily have uh, a roadmap, uh, possibly a strategy, but yeah, this is great. Well, let's, hey, thank you for participating in your audience. Well, now you can see uh, what kind of company you're keeping. It's it, for all the effort that's gone into uh, advising the water wastewater industry as to the, the risk issues and the frameworks and such. I think it's been a good 10 years in the United States anyway. Uh, and we put out uh, you know, here's here's what you should do and should be um, endeavoring to do. Uh, oh, we have another question. I'm sorry, I didn't see that one. Oh, there we go. And to Stephanie's point, this really then helps uh, keep you on track and, and chart your progress. Uh, and again, so difference between a formal audit from, you know, for us, it's a municipal auditor general versus the audits that we do internally or a third party that we get to come in and audit us. So there's multiple facets of that audit piece. And, and to your point, you think it's really an important aspect of keeping your program on track and funded. Yeah. It's excellent. Yeah. Helps you build right. a strategy. Well, you know, she's getting to know us a little bit through our interactions, but uh, I'd like to give you all a chance to uh, introduce yourselves, uh, a little bit about your operation, your organization, your maturity maybe, and uh, let's make a comment about some, uh, a couple recent high profile incidents that have taken place in the United States. I, I assume these might be reverberating across the globe, but American Water Works, which is the largest water utility in the United States. And it's not limited only to New Jersey where they're headquartered. They, they manage water, about 500 different water utilities. It is working, currently working through a cyber incident. And you would think that the, the largest water utility in the U.S. would have a pretty significant cybersecurity budget. Uh, and that actually followed an alert that came out from, uh, at least in the United States, our uh, Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, we call it CISA. And the U.S. Uh, has had several warnings in the month of September that had called out water, wastewater utilities as a potential target. But so my question, my long-winded intro is, please introduce yourself and tell us how these highly publicized incidents have influenced your organization in the last 30 days. And, um, you know, since we have our our sponsor who is uh, with us, Rob, uh, I'm gonna start with you because even these would have an impact on the OEMs. So Rob? Sure, thank you, Mike. Uh, Rob Putman, 
ABB. I work uh, in our process automation business area. My role is uh, global manager of cybersecurity products and services. Um, to your point, uh, this is just uh, another, the recent events are just another reminder that um, cybersecurity matters. Uh, you've got to think it through, you've got to identify risk, you've got to put a program and governance model together so that you can uh, self-validate for want of a better term. Am I actually doing what I said I should be doing? My question is less that there was a breach <clears throat> and more how well prepared are they? I don't know what kind of budget they had, the maturity of their program, et cetera. Um, but breaches are going to happen. It's how you respond and recover, I think, is um, as interesting. So that's that's how we're thinking about it. Um, I don't want to get into yeah. the commercial side of ABB too much, but uh, obviously because of my role and, and many like me throughout ABB, we take the topic very seriously as an OEM. Very good. Uh, Stephanie, uh, please take the opportunity to introduce yourself. Um, afternoon, everyone. I'm Stephanie LeBlanc I'm from Halifax Water. Uh, my role here is the Senior Manager of Information and Technology Services, a very long title to say that I take care of IT, OT, and the cyber program uh, falls under my uh, purview. Um, and it has been very interesting uh, unifying the IT and OT team here, um, but very worthwhile and fruitful. Um, these things that are happening in the news, uh, what often will happen here at Halifax Water is um, the board and executive will ask us, okay, so we have this strategy and plan. What, you know, how does this impact us? Do we have pieces in place? Can we recover to Robert's, uh, to Robert's point, which is respond and recover, which people are kind of moving to the right on um, and kind of shifting us into where our cybersecurity programs just starting to get a little bit more mature into um, what we're calling the 16 benchmarks that we want to be able to let our board know of what are we doing and how are we doing in each of the categories, uh, taking all 16 measures into the five buckets of NIST um, and uh, yeah, and letting them know like how we're doing and what we, you know, how we think we're progressing. Um, but the big thing to, to Robert's point, it's, it's a matter of when it's not if so, um, you know, we are doing all that we can to remain safe, but we know that it will happen and how quickly can we recover from it? Thank you, Mike. Uh, I am going to, before I introduce Felipe, uh, I would like to address a question that came up that's along these lines, Stephanie, which is, um, Daniel says, is, um, as an expert in ICS OT cybersecurity, he would say that an ICS slash OT directed ransomware is not likely to happen, meaning a malware that's designed to exploit uh, a vulnerability within an OT operating system and encrypt the data associated with uh, the operational technology. Um, what do you think is this question? Do you have a, an opinion? Any, and feel free to worry. Uh, I think there's two pieces there. One is um, not so much for Halifax Water, but what I have heard out in the community is there are some OT systems that are directly connected to the internet. If anybody wants to take a dark web dive there, um, you can find some of that stuff. And that's not, um, you know, that wouldn't be best practice for Halifax water. Uh, so I do agree with that question. If, you know, your networks are air gapped or they're, you know, um, almost completely separated, I won't say completely separated. Um, folks, you know, the only other part of that is, you know, can someone get on your corporate network and jump across to OT? If you're completely air gapped, obviously that's not going to be a problem. But if, um, if you're not, if you're allowing some remote capability, there's every possibility. And so uh, our team, um, you know, for lack of better terms, what we call it is the IT OT kill switch. And it is a literal button that they want to call the easy button that as soon as something happens, you just, nobody's connected to OT anymore. Um, and so, yeah, so I think that, yes, although it's low, uh, depends on how much flexibility you're giving to your people, depending on your facilities. We have almost 400 facilities here at Halifax Water. It's not possible wow. to be in all of them all of the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. And uh, I, I think uh, this question does come from 
what we've seen historically so far are uh, the ransomware is on the IT side, which then maybe the kill switch is initiated just out of pure caution. Uh, Philippe, uh, on, uh, on to you. Uh, please take a moment to introduce yourself. Uh, looking forward to hearing more from you today as well. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Philippe Costa, and I am the IT coordinator, the IT manager of Aguas e Energia do Porto from Portugal. Uh, I'm also responsible for the uh, security, the information security of the company. Uh, well, and I'm I'm here today to 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 share with with uh, with all of us the experience that we had with an incident like uh, almost two years ago, and uh, what have we done after that incident. But uh, ju just just uh, a, a quick recap about the the water the the water incident that you had. Uh, yeah. in the United States because here in, in Europe uh, you know um, we didn't uh, we didn't have that news uh, on the on the mainstream news of course we are a water utility we are aware of that happen but it's not a mainstream uh, happening I don't know if that happens in the United States if that level of awareness is uh, that's high. That's uh, every. It, it's on the news every everywhere. But here it doesn't happen like that. But in in fact, we had uh, last week uh, a ransomware attack on the um, national identity management. The, 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 and uh, it was a side note news. It, it, it's not even <laughs> a big news. <laughs> and there are a lot of national identity services stopped at the moment. Does your government agencies that uh, oversee your critical infrastructure yes. offer frequent alerts and is water wastewater on um, getting more notice? Uh, yes, yes, we 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 have a national. In fact, we have two national inst institutions that uh, that uh, are aware of what we are doing uh, related to cybersecurity. One more uh, directed to the cyber, the IT, the networking. And another one more related to the to the to the data to the personal data the um, oh, right. uh, GDPR. GD oh yeah. yeah. So there yeah, are that... two different two different uh, agencies that take care of those two different subjects. Yeah, I think GDPR is maybe more relevant given that yeah. you've got customer you know data. So yes, 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 yes. At least uh, more impactful. Um, and we will get to your regulatory concerns here soon. <laughs> uh, before we jump into the timeline of the incident, um, I want to cover a, a topic that uh, uh, we highlight in our, our webinar title, which you know we call out the term material. Uh, and, and in the United States, the term material is... Uh, is being employed by the Security and Exchange Commission, which is overseeing public companies, to just to classify a certain level of negative financial and reputational impact that would need to be disclosed to investors. And cyber risk now is uh, is being called out as one of those. So let's just take a few minutes to discuss the with the panel here the language cybersecurity leaders use when communicating cyber risk to senior management or should be using. Um, I'll toss this over to you, Stephanie, first. So, what what lang what is the language of the business that you're using that you found effective when you're communicating cyber risk with your leadership? Um, so, th there's a few ways that um, we're kind of bringing that forward to the board and to our executive. Um, one is we have an enterprise risk management program here at Halifax Water. And so we were kind of dovetailing our cybersecurity program in with that because folks are used to using that language of likelihood and impact. Okay. Um, look at uh, you know how big an event is uh, in terms of finance or regulatory, um, you know, reputational concerns or you know staff and customers, our people kind of sector, and what that means across that likelihood um, and impact. And so with that, we have um, we can bring forward what we feel is the cyber risk and you know where we feel that fits from like our scale is one to 25, 25 being okay. high. Um, <laughs> and then what we're gonna do for mitigation plans. So you know if we're using that business language with them um, instead of a IT techie kind of language, that goes a long way. 
Um, another thing is that we do uh, a regular, I should say we, I guess it's me, um, do a regular update to the board uh, every month. Uh, we also have the Enterprise Risk Management Subcommittee that we do a presentation to as well. But it's very much about, uh, and I'll go back to the auditing that we talked about, we did have a municipal audit, a bunch of recommendations came out of it. We had done um, a third party audit as well that about 100 recommendations came out of it. So we have about 147 recommendations that we're working through, prioritized, all those things. And so we started just working with them on that language of what are the 147 recommendations that we're doing? What are we doing about them? How are we going about it? That whole idea of a roadmap and plan, uh, we give them. 18 months and tell them each thing that we're going to be working on and then showing progress against them. So we're re using more business tactic than we are the language of cyber technology um, to help them understand what's happening. And uh, any step of the way, you're essentially having to show what's the return on um, yes. budget dollars spent in some fashion, whether it's dollars or risk reduction. Yes. Yep. So we're, yes, we're constantly reassessing them and showing them how we've brought that level down. Yeah. Uh, Philippe, uh, just a question along these lines, which is, uh, since you are responsible for cybersecurity at the organization, what have you found most effective to secure the budget that you uh, desire each year? That, spring this question on a fleet without prepping them for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay. Uh, well, I, of course, we, we all have uh, a limited budget, of course. But right. inside of that limited budget, we, we well, uh, my, my, my department uh, can distribute the, the budget for initiatives. And uh, if we want to put some more money on the cybersecurity, and we, we will have to put less in infrastructure, for example. Okay. And uh, I think, I, I will say like uh, almost from five years ago, uh, about 30% of uh, our budget goes to cybersecurity initiatives. And uh, yeah. well, I, I never had, uh, uh, I never heard uh, a no from our administration board on any cybersecurity initiative. Uh, uh -huh. well we 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 are lucky we have a very technical uh, administration board uh, and they they really understand the business and the risks and the cyber risks so uh the the, the communication that we have to have to, to to get that yes to the initiatives it's not it's not techy uh, as stephanie was saying uh but it's it's very it's very easy uh, when we get to a later point in this discussion, I would like to know where where the audience can get their biggest bang for the buck, right? And where where maybe some of the uh, the high impact initiatives or controls uh, where where they could start. So we'll we'll table that, but keep that in mind. We we want to address that. But uh, so we're gonna we're gonna dive into uh, uh, the uh, details of the incident that uh, Philippe is gonna share with us. Uh, and you know, kudos to your organization being willing to talk about this you know, and to share your experience because a lot of organizations um, would rather not do that. So uh, Philippe, I, you, know, you were intimately involved in the incident response and recovery efforts. Can you just give, give us a little more background on your operation and what happened and then we can go into the uh, first slide. Okay, I, I will try to, to put this in five minutes and then if uh, there are some answers, I will I will explain in detail. Uh, okay. Well, Shana, can you please put, because here uh, we, we were already talking that, that there's not a, a matter of of, um, of if, but it's the when. We, we had already had that when. Uh, at least the first one. You never know when it, it will happen again, but it, it happened. And uh, it was a fine Monday morning, if there are Monday mornings, fine. But uh, people started arriving at, at the company and they found a completely different uh, company. They, they, there wasn't the internet, there wasn't uh, applications, no connection to SCADA, no cell phones. They couldn't use the cars because, you know, we have all those fancy... Uh, 
car dispensers that you oh. put a code and it uh, it works uh, with with the internet we have uh, we have nothing to 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 work related to technology so uh, it was a very different monday so uh, shana perhaps next next slide what what really happened uh on the on the previous sunday uh, around 9 p.m uh i I, I received a call from the operations management team that some some operation software wasn't uh, working as they should and they asked for my help so uh, a, a quick a quick review uh, I was still at home and using some VPN and a quick review showed me some serious serious uh, flags red flags that it could be happening uh, a ransomware attack so I called my team to to people that uh, they they immediately go to the company and on site uh, we made a quick survey and around 10 30 p.m we already was sure that we were attacked by ransomware uh, i think there's another bullet shana yeah so at at 11 p.m we decided to disconnect from the world and this is a dramatic decision uh, and sometimes it's a very difficult decision if you have to to call someone, if you have, if you have to decide uh, uh, if you can do it or not, sometimes it, it can take a lot of times. But we did it uh, at, at this time of the of the night. So the next slide. Uh, immediately, that that was a crazy a crazy night because we started to. To, to follow our uh, incident response plan. We, we did have one, but it was a very fresh one. Uh, in fact, that, that plan was finished like two months earlier. We didn't have uh, put in practice. We didn't have no tabletop exercises or anything. So we, we were trying to recap, but uh, in the heat of the, of the moment, uh, I will say that it it's not that easy to try to keep calm and uh, and and follow the script but which we looking now i think it was very close to what we were planning to do yeah, so uh, call, uh, yeah. let me uh, interrupt you right there this very important point you just brought up which is fortunately you actually had it drafted an incident response plan mm -hmm. and it was written and documented correct and uh, um I would, I would like to, um, and then certainly you went through a huge stress test to determine if that plan was, you know, uh, <laughs> need a base, but at least you had the advantage of it. Um, Stephanie, you know, you haven't had this ultimate stress test for your organization. Um, what, what would be your feelings about your incident response plan and how could it survive uh, essentially what Philippe is just describing here? Uh, so um, we are we are lucky that it hasn't been us yet. Um, so what we are what we do is uh, we actually have monthly tabletop what we call tabletop incident response exercises. Um, the technical team we were all coming together at the beginning, but now we've kind of branched out now that we've done about eight or ten of them, um, and they're very eye opening. So I suggest anybody do it and just start with just even start with Philippe slides. You come in Monday. <laughs> None of this. This isn't up. Um, it, it is very interesting. You think you know what you'll do and you have a plan written, but actually when you exercise it, you realize, oh, wait a minute. No, I needed to do this instead or I need this decision done. Um, so what that's what we find. Um, so in our tabletops, one of our very first ones was what I mentioned earlier about this ITOT kind of kill switch. And that was the very first thing was who has the authority to shut it uh, down <laughs> exactly. and we're like oh i don't know maybe the operator of the plant and we ended up having to bring all these decisions probably about seven to ten of them to the executive to say can the cybersecurity team have the authority to make these decisions now would we call absolutely but again if it happens monday morning that's great most attacks happen friday at 3 p.m or sometimes exactly. they stay in your system Right. So, um, you know, you've got to know what those answers are. Um, you know, what do you do if you can't get somebody? Because our team's always like, well, we'll just call 
you know, our manager. What if he's not available? Well, we'll just call Stephanie. Well, what if Stephanie's gone too? So who, who's making the decision and who are the laterals, not just the up, the laterals when people aren't available? Um, and it's very eye-opening. And just one kind of thing that came out of that is we have, um, we use the incident command system here uh, for other natural disasters. Um, and we've kind of dovetailed again our cyber program into what the organization already knows. And so we're adopting that ourselves. So we're getting all trained and in being incident commanders and, and uh, different things. And it's very enlightening for us because we're coming from the technical side and now we're saying, okay, so when do the lawyers get involved? When does their incident insurance provider get involved? When do we get our communications team involved? All of those types of things. What forms need to be filled out? What, <laughs> right? And so now we've kind of broken this one tabletop into three and that the technical team has their playbook. This happened, pull it off the shelf, start going in, doing your logs. And the rest of us are, you know, on another team saying, okay, here's the forms we need to fill out. Who's, here's who we need to contact. You know, we need to let the province know. We need to let, let other people know. Uh, and then we're doing a third level, with, which is with our executive board, just on a very high level. Hey, this happened. We need a decision. One of our decisions that we're bringing is, I've got 50 laptops other than the IT and OT teams who gets them, right? Oh, I have 150 right. people who, who gets them first. Well, that's a, that's a bit of a interesting conversation because people will place importance on that, right? You know, what, what applications come up first, you know, so that's all part of your restoration, part of your restoration plan too. But it's interesting as you're doing these exercises, what will you do technically? What will you do in terms of, forms and filling it out and insurance and lawyers and all of those things. And then what's the executive and board? What, what's every, what's everybody's role in, in this acting for us, not for Philly. <laughs> yeah. And it sounds like you have a marketable product there. You've refined your <laughs> response plan so well, it's something that wow. uh, I'm sure the audience would love to get their hands on. Well, and one thing I would say is there's a little game called backdoors and breaches. And that's been very interesting. It's kind of a play on Dungeons and Dragons with dice and stuff, but it's very interesting because it can throw wrenches in that you weren't expecting. And what do you do? Because that's what's really going to happen. <laughs> and I'm impressed that you do something monthly. That seems like uh, an aggressive schedule. It takes time out of people's day. How do you get sponsorship for that? So the where we kind of landed was again, taking it back to business language. So if I do this once a year, no one remembers. Right. If I do it twice a year, tangently remember. Um, you know, we're not gonna have the pleasure of it being something, you know, very slow to do. Every minute, second counts, right? It's infiltrating your systems at an alarming rate as soon as they get in. And so if you can put the math around that, which that's what I've done, is you put the math around that every minute, is costing you and so Ooh, what you know if you if i take two three hours out for a team of 10 yep that's a big dollar value but it's millions on the other side right if i don't train them properly so uh, that's kind of yep that's our model <laughs> but an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure right uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, right Philippe, uh, Going back to your top bullet point, we decided to dis disconnect from the world. <clears throat> I really am curious whose final decision was to pull the plug. Yeah, it was mine. It was mine. Uh, wow. I, it was mine. And uh, yeah, lo looking at the, the, the picture that is on the presentation, uh, yeah. well, soon, uh, not at uh, 11 o'clock in the, in the evening, but uh, later, and this this will happen. Uh, you will have a small IT room where usually there are four people working, full of uh, C level administration level, working with technical guys taking decisions. But as you were saying, at, at three at three a.m., uh, you don't have all of those people working with you, making decisions, uh, saying who's gonna have the the fifty laptops or uh, whose application is going to be up first. This will come up uh, later, but at 3 a.m., somebody has to to know who who can plug the the, the, yeah. the internet cable. It's true, it's true. And uh, Stephanie was was 
already covering almost the pains that we felt on a real scenario. Uh, so I guess the, the table topics, uh, an excellent exercise. But I, I was just curious, Stephanie, your tabletop exercises cover only IT teams or all the company teams? No, it, it covers IT and OT. That's so that would be both my teams. Um, okay. And yeah, we don't. So the exercises for um, you know, hurricanes or all of that stuff, that's in another level above me, plus the province, they do their okay. own exercises. So okay. yeah, I'm just running them from basically from a technology and we're running them from cyber. But from my point of view, if something should go out, you know, we lose a generator in half of our <laughs> application, yeah. we can use the same system. Exactly. Well, I was just asking that because the, the feeling I had during the, the incident is that the IT people will go crazy during a couple of weeks, having a lot of things to do. And the first moments, the rest of the company is just looking around, trying to find something they that can do because all the systems are stopped and they are expecting a plan B from the IT people. And uh, <laughs> my advice is to have a plan B, not depending on the IT. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we have a whole other program called the Business Continuity Program. It's part of the yes, ERM exactly. or Enterprise Risk Framework. But yeah, all the downtime procedures, um, because that's that's quite scary to the business when you say, OK, you're you're blind. What are we doing? You can't <laughs> see your facility. It's like, oh, we got to send people out. We got to do this. You know, so it is getting them engaged and writing up those uh, those business continuity plans. Yeah. Yes, exactly, Great. exactly. So, Mike, sh should I go back to the bullets? Yeah, let's continue yeah. the story. It's uh, evolving. Well, uh, uh, we are still on the same uh, in the in the same night, Sunday night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> still, still, uh, three three lonely IT people working at the office trying to to, to recover a, a big ransomware incident. So, but we called for help. We 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 called for for uh, our our uh, IT teams that uh, we subcontract uh we started the 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 the, um, the legal uh, compromises that we have to comply notify all the authorities we have a couple of hours to do that uh, uh, well and and start shutting down everything we 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 started our plan trying to segmentate uh, uh, the 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 um, the network, the buildings, the the floors. We 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 started looking at the backups to, to see if they were compromised, and uh, well, uh, at the time we we were looking at the data and all the backups. They 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 looked okay. So uh, early in that morning, uh, it was already Monday at two a.m. We started restoring a, a domain controller just to have access to to all the the systems to see what what was the damage well and of course we have disabled all the service and user accounts and this is very painful uh, and i i will i will explain later about that can, can you see the okay so what what really happened because uh, we 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 were uh, we were honestly we were ready to start recovering all the system it was three in the morning uh, we had a couple of hours left to the company open, so let's start recovering. But no, we, we, we can't. We, we must do exactly what happened. And this is very dramatic because uh, even if you have a plan, if, even if you have all the backups in, 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 uh, in order, uh, if you don't know what's really happened, you, you, you can be restoring uh, some, some restore points that are already compromised. And, a couple of weeks later, you'll be uh, again facing a ransomware. Right. So uh, our our forensic team, uh, they 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 have uh, made the, the the analysis, and this happened on the same uh, on the same um, weekend. So during the Saturday and during the the Sunday. They, the, the, the Lockbit team, uh, the, the International Ransomware Group, they, they gathered to, to enter on our firewall using, using a flaw. It was a misconfiguration of the firewall. Uh, and they managed to get in using a, a, a user account that had no privileges. But then they, they could escalate during the whole Saturday and Sunday. And when they get in, they they started encrypting everything, and that that will lead us to the 
to the alert that we that we had and most of the incident it's it's uh, it's this then then it's the recovery plan that i could explain a little i don't know if you want to hear it about it now well, or uh, i may be jumping ahead but is uh, did lockbit give you a method of contacting them and did you uh, yes. consider doing that uh let me explain you the, the 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 small images that you see on the left one of them oh. is the actual hall the entrance hall of the company and the, the the only piece of technology that we had working is that tv connected to oh. a small usb computer that was putting the information what systems are going to be recovered first uh Kind of a status like okay this is okay this is going to be okay in a week this is going to be okay mm. in two weeks so to, to manage expectations because there will be a lot of stress on the it team uh, to to get their their systems first and the, the other image is a lot of paper that uh, lockpit uh, they managed to 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 put the printers printing the really? ransomware uh, oh print. okay so until mm, until the, the printer was out of paper, uh, you can see there's there's some some wow. ransomware notes, physical one. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> they planned ahead to make sure you had a way to, yes, to yes, yes, yes. read about their claims or yes, yes. demands. Mm. Yes. Uh, well, uh, we we didn't engage with the with the Lockbit team. Uh, we didn't. Well. I guess I guess this is a decision that is very hard to do, and each each scenario should be different. But because we had all the data that we needed, and uh, because uh, we we didn't lost any any data because we we used the the Friday night backups, uh, and the, and we are on Monday morning uh, scenario, so we lost the data of a weekend, which typically is almost closed the the company uh so we didn't engage in any kind of contact uh, we okay. received a couple of emails uh, we received a couple uh, of emails through through the, the 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 available emails that we have uh but we we ignored and of course we we didn't pay any ransomware but i don't know i'm i'm, I'm not judging uh and each company should should do their path and their decisions. Yeah. Please just give you a heads up. We have about a little less than 10 minutes left to go. And it's going to be a big interest to the audience to know, again, this, yeah, we're talking IT systems right now. Yeah. And let's talk also at some point here about uh, OT. You know, did any time was there any disruption of service, water distribution, sewer treatment, et cetera? Uh, how, did, how did the OT side house get affected by this? Well, well, it wasn't. Uh, well, it wasn't directly. Uh, okay. But uh, usually, we are used to 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 look at the dashboards, to look at the information that comes out from the SCADA systems, and uh, because we didn't have any internet connection to the outside world or to to whatever, well, the, the outside of the building, uh, we couldn't see anything. So the the operation still continued without any kind of disruption but it was mainly uh on 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 place you cannot do it remotely you had to go to there you have to put people uh watching at the sensors you have to put people opening the 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 the, the valves that you have to do uh you you can you can work of course this this water distribution business uh, it has centuries of history. It doesn't need to rely on computers, but it still works. But it will be very painful to 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 continue the operation. Yeah. What was the duration of manual operations? Uh, well, I, I was I was looking at the the incident uh, dates preparing to this presentation, and yeah. we ha we are talking about the Monday the monday morning and the first uh, time we connected again to the internet was only on wednesday and just to see uh, if we can connect to to the email and to have uh, uh, telephones 
to, to connect with our customers. But we were almost two weeks relying with almost no software. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, but the whole restore, the whole restore uh, mm. uh, process, it took us almost three months. Three months. Yeah. yeah. Stephanie, is this in line with what <laughs> you're telling your executives in terms of what the various levels of impact can be? Yeah. I, even our insurance provider, and I don't know, Philip, if you, you guys had an insurance provider, um, but uh, a lot of them are saying, you know, start to brace yourself for six weeks to six months um, of not having, um, you know, availability to technology, which is seems unfathomable fathomable to most of us um another piece that they brought up was depending on you know how far it's infiltrated the insurance provider will want all of your gear right so they're going to take it out so you need a whole restoration site um, that hopefully has not been infected <laughs> um, backups you were just saying that philip wonderful that your backups were uh you know available and not encrypted um, but that's what they're starting to see now is people are, you know, getting in, they're messing around with your primary site and your secondary site. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, for, for folks, that's, you know, a piece of advice is to try to keep them as separated as possible and only turn them on to test, um, which that's another piece of the whole disaster recovery, cyber or not, um, is having another uh, whole separate space um, dedicated to, to bringing you back up. Um, something else Philip said that I know the team just with incident response has brought up uh, a couple of things is, uh, you know, having for us, we are a Microsoft shop. So having a second tenant or another piece of software, we can all go from a personal device or something else into that space um, to see all of our SOPs and all that. Um, I think we went to a webinar once and we were so scared. We printed everything, backed it up on USBs, put them in vaults at multiple facilities. <laughs> um, you know, so there, there's a lot to uh, to take in there. Um, so, yeah, it, it's definitely in line and it's, you know, could be millions of dollars even for a medium impact. Wow. Um, so we're, we're preparing them. Um, for those of you that don't know, Halifax is in Nova Scotia and we're in Canada. Uh, and a number of our health... Um, I, I guess our health authorities, which are kind of provincial, they've been hit and they've been down, can have, can be down for over a year for some of their software. So this is not, you know, we're not making up numbers here. It's, it's real yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, there, there is a uh, question on the audience. I, I would like to, sure. to reply very fast because they, they, the, it's, they are asking if you during the incident, it looks like internal networks were down. Yes, it is correct. Uh, and the main reason is because usually you just uh, focus on the servers on the ransomware uh, incident, but the the computers, the personal computers, can also be infected, and they were infected. Some of them that were uh, powered on during the weekend, they also got hit uh, with ransomware. So we tried to to disconnect everything, uh, and we we were as much isolated as we could. So even on the on the next room, they weren't connected to to the to the IT team. Um, yeah, we are going to uh, run out of time. It's just been a you know a, you know, a great you know interaction, and um, I hope though the audience is getting a lot out of this. Certainly uh, using. Your slides, believe to uh, you know, as uh, Stephanie uh, uh, encouraged the audience to do, would be a, a great takeaway. Um, I like to wrap up with um, you know, all right, what are, what's what are some good takeaways? Maybe your advice to the audience as to the top one or two things to consider doing that, uh, in retrospect, you know, from lessons learned, you would advise them to do. And certainly, Rob, I'll, I'll give you the floor. Uh, so that you deal with many clients and have to assist them through their process of securing your automation systems. Uh, what's what's your advice to the audience? Well, I got to tell you, listening to uh, Stephanie and, and Felipe, I've, I've got a bunch of questions, so I want to gloss over this. Uh, the cartoon diagram here is is really take it as a call to action. Take it as a model or framework to uh, begin uh, being curious about threat modeling 
and think about in these environments what must always work and what must never happen. And don't be intimidated by the topic. Um, I think sometimes I've said it before, inaction is the worst thing we can possibly do. There's no such thing as perfect security. The question though that's coming up and and Stephanie, forgive me, gold star for referencing Dungeons and Dragons in an OT security. <laughs> I love it. Um, but so the thing that's coming up for me and Felipe, you you disconnected, right? Um, operations continued. There was no uh, uh, risk to water quality, delivery, um, or safety of your employees. Those are a few things that come uh, top of mind when I think about the operational environment. Were Was your ability to invoice customers, was your ability to uh, access data, did you have any gaps there? In other words, you know, Rob used 300 gallons on his lawn over that weekend, or for however long you had a blind spot around uh, usage data, was that compromised at all? Did it get into your ability to, to just bill customers? And I'm thinking of the U.S. Uh, colonial pipeline similarity there. Well, yes, we, we couldn't bill the customers for uh, at least one one of the month. Uh, we had the so for data. thirty days. Yes, we had we had the data. Uh, but we couldn't access to the to, to the data of the, the the reading of the meter of the of the customers, so uh, we had to postpone one of the invoice. Okay, but it, it was just postponed. It wasn't yes, just we we didn't we have no it. idea what happened for thirty days out there. Yes. Okay, so a delay, and that's a cost to the business. Yes, exactly. And and Stephanie, do you? At Halifax, do you um, model? It sounds, I love that you've got that iterative um, tabletop exercise and you continue to discover gaps and fill them in. Uh, do you model similarly when you think about impact to the business? What if we lose that bridge between IT and OT? What if we lose data? Do you quantify that? We don't, but you just gave me a great idea. I have all kinds of modelers that do all kinds of other things. <laughs> Thanks for the Modelers idea. Modelers are awesome, right? So it's yeah. $150 <laughs> a day. Okay, and then the last question, I love to ask this question of business owners, those who are on the front lines, you know, delivering the, the services that you do. You don't have to answer it, but, you know, what is the cost of, of one facility being down for a day, for example? Do you have an idea of what that is? What's the cost of the business or the opportunity cost of the business? Can't deliver water, can't, whatever the reason is, what does it cost you guys as a business? Philippe, you might be in a good position to <laughs> estimate that based on your experience. We may well, have lost. Yeah, I think Stephanie is, is, is not there. Uh, well, I, 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 I don't know how to answer that question. I don't have that number. Uh, Probably our our administration have that number, but I cannot quantify how how much would cost for the company and even with the indirect costs of the images, of course, to be to be shut down for a day. Yeah. But I guess the reputational costs would be also very high and for a long time. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah the modelers can have a good time. And forgive me, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but it is a favorite. Uh, Question of mine. Of course. Things Very down. You can't do the bidding of the business. How much is that worth? And it, I think we, well, I think we have uh, exhausted our time. I want to thank the audience for hanging there with us and uh, appreciate the questions. Uh, I believe we have a way to answer those via chat and get those to you. Panel, you guys were great. Stephanie, thank you for. Um, your contribution, Philippe, this was awesome. Uh, there'll probably be an encore performance required. So uh, I'd like to turn this back over to the, the SWAN team to wrap us up. Thank you very much. That was uh, fantastic. Appreciate you moderating this, Mike, and to all our panelists, and of course, ABB for par uh, partnering with us. I've dropped in into the chat a very quick one minute feedback uh, form just to help shape our future programming. Um, and with that, if you enjoy these types of events, if you have suggestions for how to co-create um, themes and topics relevant to the digital transformation journey, 
we invite all uh, SWAN members um, to reach out to us. Um, this is a, the exciting launch of SWAN Insights as a service where we really will be partnering with our SWAN members on cutting edge topics um, that you are all passionate about related to concrete utility challenges. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop a quick link for all of you uh, to get in touch with us. Get in touch with us. Uh, we look forward to partnering with you on this um, and moving the needle forward on Smart Water. Thank you again uh, to everyone for joining us. Appreciate it. Take care.